Alrighty guys, we're going to be doing a tubular lockpick and key generation demonstration using this American padlock. Okay, so A, make sure you have some blanks. You're going to need blanks. These are 1137B from Ilco. Okay, whatever blanks you like, I don't care. Uh, you're gonna need the HPC TPLC Model B. This is the go-to. This sucker picks just about everything. And yes, if used properly and practiced enough, it will pick the um, Ace-2 picks or Ace-2 locks. <clears throat> so that's what we've got. I'm taking pictures too so we can if you guys want this in a downloadable PDF Email me try county locksmith service at gmail.com. I will send you the pictures in a downloadable PDF Okay Also, if you want to watch the video, it will be at waynesloxshop.com. So you're gonna Tension this you'll have to play with the tension. You have to play with the pick you have to use it be able to get what you like so I like to kind of loosen them up and then flatten everything out and then just give it just till it starts to feel a little tight okay to reset it you just push like so okay click that's what resets it just like that okay and you push the washer down it pushes all the little feeler gauges down and that's what it'll look like okay come on camera Anyways, now you're going to be taking this side right here that has no feeler gauge on it, and that's where that's going to go in the slot. Okay? Just like so. Ta da! Okay? Then you're going to insert, okay, push it in, and you'll start to feel it. Oop, I loosen that up way too much. Okay, push that, push that in there. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to rotate and give a little turning jiggle like so. And I'm gonna come back, little turning jiggle. It's almost like impressioning, okay? Little turning jiggle after you bind it. So you're gonna just bind and give a turning jiggle, okay? Turning jiggle, release, bind, turning jiggle. Release, bind, turning jiggle. Release, bind, turning jiggle and then you'll get a feel for it and you do it over and over and over and eventually the pins will go where they need to go and you'll have a lock picked. If you do it for a while you don't get anything you may need to reset it. Okay click. Did you see that? Click it. The lock is now picked. Okay? You now have the key code. Do not touch anything. Do not reset. I like to immediately come in and tighten the tension wrench right here or the tightening screw. I don't know what they call it, but anyways, right there. Tighten that clutch. We'll call it a clutch, okay? Because it, it, it clutches how much pressure these things have so you don't lose the key. Then we take this guy here, okay? Ta-da! And this has all the numbers on it. So, we will now go, you'll look at your key blank, okay? 
and we'll hold it like so and we'll now decode the lock. You put this on here and you read it. Okay? Four, three, two. This one says five. Okay? So I'm just going to decode this. I'll come back and take pictures here in a minute. Five, and then you write it down. Five. Okay? And then we go around. Just make sure which way you go around clockwise, counterclockwise, etc., etc. Okay? Two. Seven. One. Five. And you can see how I'm holding this here to where it's completely flat all the way across the top. And this is uber, uber important. Okay? All the way across the top. All the way across the top, like so. So that way, that prevents you from moving it and distorting the key code, all right? So you need to have this. It's designed to be specifically long enough to where you can lay it flat across there like that. Now we have the key decoded, okay? Keep that there just in case you need it again. At this point, we'll be using the HPC cutter, hand cutter. So you can take that and this and key blanks in your pocket and you can go to the lock and you can open it up and then you can make keys for it right then and there. Uh, if you've got to make a lot of keys, it's kind of a pain. But anyways, if you need to adjust this, I suggest you make sure that everything's calibrated first. But if you need to calibrate it, you can adjust it right here if it's cutting off, okay? And you can tell if it's cutting off because you can cut your key and then you can use your decoder to measure the cut to make sure that the key is working properly. So, okay, when it's in this position right here, all the way up and the arrow pointing down like so, this is your starting position, okay? This is the arrow indicator of where you're actually going to be. Okay, right there. Your key blank in the same position, in the same way, the same rotation that you took the key. See how we're starting here with the key and the nub right there? that's gonna go directly off to the side, okay? So you're gonna be reading your key the same way you're reading your pick. So you put it in there directly. And we're gonna go this way. So that way when I look at this, I'm looking at the pick and I'm looking to see if those deep cuts measure up. Five, three, two, seven, five, one, five. Five three two seven five one five. I can look at that and see what we got going on. Okay, so that is your position right there. Hopefully it has that, and you can see that. Cha Ching. Okay. Now this is your cutter. It looks like it's a cutter. It looks like it could cut things. All right, so our first cut is a five, okay? So we're at zero, 
where the indicator is, and I'm going to go in this direction, which would be counterclockwise. Okay, when I'm looking at it counterclockwise, and I'm looking at it directly like so, and I'm going to go to the number five. Okay, you can see roughly how much space is in between there for a number five cut. Okay, if it doesn't look like that, you have problems. Okay, this is then going to go into here and it's going to trap the key like so. There's two holes, there's two holes, there's a post and another post, a long post and a short post. They only go one way, okay? They can only go one way. And that's going to lock the wheel, the depth wheel, from turning. Now I can no longer turn this, okay? So I can't lose position on it. That thread depth then stops this. The way this works is this cutter goes into here. It slides up through the hole and it cuts the key. This is your measuring factor based off of rotation and depth. This, you can see, rubs right onto here. Where it rubs on there, that's how it stops it, okay? This stops right there. That's how this system works. So you can see the cutter come up. There should be no space you're putting pressure down, holding the key in place, like so. Okay, you have to hold the key down. So that's why there's this little finger groove here. So you can grab it like so, and then you're twisting this way. Think of it like grinding a pepper grinder. It cuts, you can go back and forth, but you need to go until there is no more room in here. There is absolutely no more room. Okay? So I'll show you what that looks like before we start. I'll show you on a more dramatic one here. So my five is now cut. We now undo, undo, pick up. That's your cut. You can see the cut. Now. Okay? Cha-ching. Cut. I'm going to be rotating in the same direction. If you need to look at your key or you need to look at your pick, go ahead. The next one I've got is a three. That looks like a three. If we were going the wrong direction, that pin is all the way down. That's a one. We know it's not a one. We know it's a three. So I'm holding this in the same direction, looking at it this way, turning everything in the same direction. That's how you can get really, really confused with this. Now I'm on the next one, okay? I'm going to turn this back to zero, like so. And I'm again going to go counterclockwise until I reach the number three. Once I reach the number three, I'm going to trap the wheel And lock it in. It needs to be flat. If it's not flat, you're not doing it right. If there's any gap in between the key and the base of the cutter, you are doing this incorrectly. The number is lined up, the wheel is locked in place, we insert the cutter, and I'll show you on the seven what it looks like. Okay, so we cut it, cut it, cut it until it's flush. A, you'll feel it stop cutting. You can feel a little grinding. When you feel the grinding stop, it's done. And when you see that there is no longer any space in there, that's it. It's all done. Okay, that's your cut. Three. Two. So I like to go all the way back to zero. Back to zero and then go because if you just go from here and you turn it too far you're gonna you're not even gonna be cutting anything anymore so reset the tool back to zero
and then go from there. So we reset the tool back to zero, and we're going to set it on two. Lock it in. Lock the key in. And we are now on number two. Cutting depth. Okay. Cut until it's all done. Make sure that it's flat. Can't feel any more grinding. That's your first indication. And then visual indicator that it's now cutting or it's now flush with this. It stopped cutting. Okay. Big number seven cut. Now I'm going to look at my key. I'm going to be going from a two to a seven. I'll be looking at my pick. The biggest cut of all. Yes. Two, seven, two, seven. All in the same direction. Okay. That's going to go just like so. Reset my machine back to zero. Back to zero. And then over to seven. First one. Lock it in. Okay. Always, always, always lock it in. Lock it in. Now look at the gap. Can you see the gap? You see the gap and the distance in between here and here. In between here and here. Okay? Right there. That distance and that gap will be gone when we're done. That's how deep a number seven cut is. Okay? So we're gonna grindy, grindy, grindy until that's all gone. Okay, make sure that it's flush. And okay, now look at it. No gap. So that will be the difference. That will be your indication. Let's see if I can get some light in there. No gap. Okay, absolutely no gap in between the cutting plate and the depth plate. You'll have to ask HPC what the uh, exact dimensions of that are. But anyways, okay, and look at it. Look at that cut. That's what it's going to look like, okay? Just like so. Okay. Now that's done. And our next cut's gonna be a uh, five. Pick the key up, turn it, reset my machine, and then go to a five. Okay. There's your five. Just like so. Bingo. That's how much it's going to cut for a five. That's what a five depth is going to look like. Okay? Hopefully you can see that. And grindy, grindy, grindy. Just like a salt and pepper shaker. Okay? But it's mobile. It's nice. You don't need any power. Okay? Ah. And that's what it's going to look like. Yeah. Pop that off. Rotate our key again. Same direction. Take a look at the key. Take a look at your pick. Okay. I've got a number one. It barely even looks like a cut. Reset the dial and go to a number one. The more space you have here, 
the further it holds this out, the less the depth of the cut is. The further this is um, up to here, the less this gap is, the deeper the cut is, the deeper it's gonna allow this to cut into the key. So this one, you're barely going to notice it. Okay. Oops. Trying to show the camera and having everything backwards. Proving to be difficult. All right, number one. That's what a one's gonna look like. Very teeny tiny, very teeny tiny. Okay. It's a time-consuming process, so charge accordingly. Okay. This video is almost 20 minutes long. Obviously, you can do it a whole lot faster when you're not trying to explain what the heck you're trying to do. But just bear in mind that it is a time-consuming process. All right. So our next cut is going to be a five. Reset the dial. Come back to number five. Bingo. Hey, last cut. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. Okay. Grindy, grindy, grindy. Use all of your senses. Feel it cutting. Look at it cutting. Watch it cutting. Hear it cutting. Okay. Notice the sound of the cutting that it's making. Notice the sound when it's not cutting anymore. Feel the difference in pressure and the difference in the grit when you're grinding it. Keep all of these senses all while you're watching, listening, hearing, feeling, and then you're going to know what's going on with the, with the machine as you're trying to use it. It's a complicated machine to use. Make sure that you're paying attention to it. I mean, it's not that complicated, but if it's the first time, I know the first time I used it, it was a pain to, to, to try and cut my first key. You know, that's why I'm making this video to try and help you guys out. So just keep that in mind that you need to charge accordingly. Okay, so there's the last one. Ting, 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 ting. Okay, come on camera. Cut, 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 all the way around. Now here's gonna be the moment of truth. We'll lose that, perfect. Okay, cut, cut, cut. So there's something else to note. See how it's in the pick position, how that's not lined up with that? That needs to be lined back up over there. So that's why it's uber important to make sure you don't mess up your pick. Because the pick now needs to go back in and reset it. how it should look okay voila make sure you reset it that's a very good point to make if you because your pick your pick doesn't have that little nub or that little foot on the edge of it to keep it locked in there so you can't pull the key out at any random position with your pick you can it doesn't have that foot so make sure that you reset it and that's why it's always a good idea to tighten that sucker down so you don't lose it notice how easy that was if it didn't work out that way, I'd have to repick the lock again. And we get the key we just made. Perfect. Okay. Lock. Locked. Click. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome sauce. Now that you have the code, you can do whatever you want. You have the code written down. You can make more keys. Um, you can give them the code. You can do whatever you want to with it. But um, that's how you make that's how you make a tubular key from scratch. That is how you pick the lock with the HPC um, Model B, and 
that is how you cut a key using the HPC cutter. For more information, check out waynelockshop.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you've done this a million times, it's probably not going to be that interesting. If you haven't seen how to do that before, this may be interesting to you. If you don't, if your key doesn't turn out properly, nine times out of ten, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line the key up with the pick and make sure that you went in the correct direction. The first thing, the biggest mistake people are going to make is go in the opposite direction. They're not going to keep cutting in the same direction. They're going to read it backwards. So try and cut the key backwards. If that doesn't work, then you need to start over. You need to recut. You need to re-read, and then you need to re-write your numbers down. I would suggest just completely starting over. If your pick still works, then the then the uh, depths and the gauges are still good. But if not, then you need to go ahead and uh, redo that. I'm actually going to pull my little calibration kit out right now, and I'll show you guys where I have mine calibrated to. So that way, if you need to calibrate your machine, you can at least see where I'm starting off at. On. Okay. So from the edge to the very edge of the cutter, this will at least give you a starting point. I'm at 177.85. Okay. From the edge to the cutter, and from here on this side, I give you this measurement. We can add about. One inch. Okay. That's what I'm getting. It's a real good spot to start having that exactly one inch out. All right? And then each one of those cutting depths for our key, you can, we can use the back end and it'll tell you. Okay? First cut is 945, probably supposed to be 10. 945. what I'm reading anyways. So number five cut should be 945. Put this guy in there. Number three is 545. Number two is 410. Seven. Eleven seventy. Number five again. Twenty. Number one. It's a itty bitty little speck. Two twenty-five. And uh, number five yet again. couple things to get you guys started and go from there so thanks for watching guys check out waynelockshop.com join get involved join uh, join the groups get involved get out there and join locksmith nation on Facebook get out there and join clear star get out there and join Aloha whatever whatever group or, or association you want to get with and have help them get more people there Okay, this demonstration and this whole video is done completely free. It's done just for you guys, just so we can get the message out there to try and get people to get involved. So, for 
more information, check out waynesmarkshop.com. Get involved and join something, guys. Thanks for watching.